Hi friends, it's Deanne Williston with Our Blooming Catholic Life. And we're here with our last look at the, oh, I wanted to say the Gospel of St. Luke chapter 9. I'm so used to it. Psalm 6, the first of the penitential psalms. I did a little bit more research in between uh, sessions and most of it focused on simple things that most people know, like that Shoal is considered the netherworld where the souls of the dead sink down. Um, and just uh, that 6-8, depart from me, uh, is, is paralleled in Matthew 7-23. And then it talks a lot about mercy. And here's the first time I've run into a problem. This is just the book of Psalms. And why I also have the study guide for the New Testament, it says C word study in Exodus. Wah, wah, wah. We don't have that. So we can't look up and apparently merciful love was a word study in a different book of the Old Testament. The Old Testament as a whole is not out yet. I don't have that one. Um, so I can't look up that word study. So I grabbed my modern Catholic dictionary instead and thought I'd look up mercy in there just to see what it said. And what it has is the disposition to be kind and forgiving, founded on compassion Mercy differs from compassion or the feeling of sympathy and putting this feeling into practice with a readiness to assist. It is therefore the ready willingness to help anyone in need, especially in need of pardon or reconciliation. Really interesting that ending. Let's read that again. Mercy is the disposition to be kind and forgiving. Founded on compassion, mercy differs from compassion or the feeling of sympathy and putting this feeling into practice with a readiness to assist is therefore ready willingness to help anyone in need, especially those in need of pardon or reconciliation. That really sets the, the tone a little bit. Let's go ahead then and say our prayer before the crucifix. I've got a, it's not the San Damiano crucifix, but there is a crucifix right here. Sorry, I let the battery run down on my iPad and I can only charge it facing this direction. Ready? In nomine Patris, et Filii, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Summe glorioso Deus, illumina tenebras cordis mehi, et damnihi fidem rectum, spem certain et caritatem perfectum, domini facium tuum sanctum, et verax mandatum. Amen. In nomine Patris, et Filii, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Psalm 6, a prayer for the penitent sinner under the scourge of God, the first penitential psalm. Unto the end in verses, a psalm for David for the octave. O Lord, rebuke me not in indignation, nor chastise me in thy wrath. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am weak. Heal me, O Lord, for my bones are troubled. O Lord, rebuke me not in thy indignation, nor chastise me in thy wrath. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am weak. Heal me, O Lord, for my bones are troubled. Psalm 6, unto the end, in verses, a psalm for David for the octave. O Lord, rebuke me not in thy indignation, nor chastise me in thy wrath. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am weak. Heal me, O Lord, for my bones are troubled. That hit you a little bit different having looked up the word mercy in the modern Catholic dictionary? I think it kind of does for me. Although I've always known that mercy is on someone who's in need, this is a very specific help you're giving. You're giving help to somebody who is repenting. So let me go back and look at that again. Am I right in that? Let's look that back up. I should have put a bookmark there and I did not. I apologize. Oop, went too far. Mercy. 
willingness to anyone in help of need, especially in need of pardon or reconciliation. So it doesn't say that they have to be seeking that, right? It, they don't, although it does say that it is a prayer for a penit, of a penitent sinner. Let's look up penitent. Is that, does that presuppose that you are seeking that mercy, that you are sorry? What does exactly, are there conditions on penitent? Very close. Oh, there's a lot here on penitent. Let's see. Penitence is the state of being repentant for having sinned, is therefore a disposition of the soul arising from a realization of one's sinfulness and includes the willingness to expiate the wrongdoing. Lovely. Penitent in the sacrament of penance, the person who confesses sins and seeks absolution. In general, it's anyone who sincerely repents of wrongdoing resolves to amend his or her life, and by appropriate means tries to expiate the guilt and punishment incurred for offending God. The penitential act is the invitation by the priest at Mass, after the opening salutation, to have the congregation acknowledge their sinfulness. This is followed by an appeal for mercy, the Kyrie, unless the plea of forgiveness was already included in the penitential act. Normally, each invocation is sung or said twice. Hmm, gotten out of that habit, haven't we? But there may also be further repetitions and also brief text insertions, tropes, if the circumstances warrant such additions. A penitential chain. Oh my, never heard of this. It's a metal chain with sharp points that pierce the flesh, worn around the waist, arms or legs by certain religious men and women as a means of penance or mortification. My, my. The penitential psalms. Seven psalms used already in the early church to express sorrow for sin and a desire for pardon. Aha, sorrow for sin and a desire for pardon are presupposed in these. They are Psalm 6, 31, in parentheses 32. Aha, I like how this lists them out. I was going to look that up and hadn't gotten to it. There's, you know, there's different ordering of the psalms. So some of them are different from my numbering. Um, they appear to just be a plus one, so you'd find them pretty easy if you went looking. But Psalm 6 is the same in either numbering. Good to know. Um, it then has penitential rite, revised ritual for the administration of the sacrament of penance, authorized by Pope Paul VI and issued by the Sacred Congregation of Divine Worship on December 2nd, 1973. It can kiss of two parts. The first contains a doctrinal section, pastoral and liturgical norms, and the revised rites for the different forms of celebration of the sacrament. The second part is offered as a help to Episcopal conferences and liturgical commissions and contains eight models for non-sacramental penitential services. There's non-sacramental penitential services? Did not know that. We can look at that in a second. Penitents are the members of a confraternity whose statutes prescribed penance and mercy. Prescribed penance and mercy. They flourished in Italy, France, and Spain from about the 13th to the 16th centuries. Their contributions, mostly social, were visiting the sick, dowering poor girls, assisting prisoners, and burying the dead. Uh, you know, Third Order Franciscan here, we were considered the brothers and sisters of penance. Um, there's a whole penitential movement. I wish there was a little bit more about that here. Um, there's not, let's see, it's under, it says the Sacrament of Confession and the Sacrament of Reconciliation. So much to learn here. Sacrament. I'm at Sacred Heart, so I need to go back. Oh, there's a lot under Sacraments. There's the Sacrament of Penance and then the Sacrament of Reconciliation is just under them. Oh, the Sacrament of Reconciliation really just says it's another name for the Sacrament of Penance. But it it focuses mainly on the healing by using that name. Um, the Sacrament of Penance, it tells you, was instituted by Christ on Easter night. Nice. I'll let you all look that up yourself. But that is the original uh, name of the church. Does it say does not say when it started being called that, but definitely by 1701, that's the first reference there. It's not an encyclopedia on this, but there is more here 
Um, oh, sacrament of confession is another popular name for the sacrament of penance, centering on the accusation of oneself to a priest in order to obtain absolution. Aha, so it's saying the official thing was the sacrament of penance. When you call it the sacrament of confession, it is focused on the accusation of oneself, on that examination of conscience. This is what I've done wrong, so that's the sacrament of confession. If you want to be focused on the healing, then you'll call it the sacrament of reconciliation. I think the sacrament of penance seems to encapsulate both of those because we've just been talking about that, how it's both admitting that you're wrong, you're repentant, and you are seeking mercy. So why don't we just call it the sacrament of penance and leave it. Confession focuses on the accusation. Reconciliation focuses on the healing. But I think penance is a more balanced look at it. So let's read that again now that we've just learned those little differences. A prayer of the penitent sinner under the scourge of God. Yeah, there's the penance and there's the accusation. And then we're going to have the mercy in just a second. So let's read this again. A prayer of a penitent sinner under the scourge of God. The first penitential psalm. Unto the end in verses, a psalm for David for the octave. O Lord, rebuke me not in thy indignation, nor chastise me in thy wrath. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am weak. Heal me, O Lord, for my bones are troubled. This is hitting a little differently for me. I'm loving this look at the penitential psalms. Again, we'll be in uh, Psalm 6 for a little bit while um, because I really want to absorb and soak all I can. I hope some of you are going to put comments below as well so we can really dive into this together, especially all you brothers and sisters of penance, wherever you fall in the Franciscan family right now. Friends, may God bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the good Lord bless you. And nobody patches at filii et spiritus sancti. Amen.